And the last head coach, uh, we don't even have to answer the least favorite. I've, I'm assuming this probably we're both going to say that Jonathan Gannon's the least favorite. He's mine, at least. I, I think it's just in this day and age, I don't understand hiring a defensive head coach unless he is just groundbreaking. Like this, this, what this defensive coordinator hire or the head coaching hire of Jonathan Gannon feels like, it feels very similar to, uh, to what we saw with Brandon Staley. It feels very similar to that, where you're looking at the defense that he was that he was coordinating, and it is just talent rich, t- yeah. absolutely talent rich. And then you look at the team he's moving to, and on the defensive side of the ball, like they don't have a whole lot of talent, right? We saw they didn't have Chandler Jones last year because he signed with the Raiders. They have Buda Baker, but Buda Baker was, I mean, I don't want to say nowhere to be seen last year, but. I didn't see a whole lot of flash plays from him. Byron Murphy hasn't looked particularly great. Um, Zaven Collins was very inconsistent. Isaiah Simmons, very inconsistent. Like they, JJ Watt now retired. Like they just don't have a whole lot of anything. And that's just, that's just on the defensive side of the ball. Now you move towards the offense and we're in the same position. You know, we talked about it a little bit earlier. What, what best case scenario, what their, their offense, they turn it around and then they go number one and then they're searching for a new offensive coordinator the next season. Right. Because that's, that's how it works. That's generally why you have to hire a defensive guy like D'Amico Ryans and Robert Sala and, and, you know, Mike Vrabel, these are like outlier guys. And they're also guys who, who are playing a very, like their team revolves around that, like the defensive side of the ball where it's like, we're going to play good defense. So then on offense, we're going to run the ball to make sure that our defense is very well rested. But I think with the Cardinals being in the division that they're in, I don't know. And especially with having Kyler Murray at court, like a superstar quarterback, like, right. We talk about Vrabel. It's like Vrabel's had Ryan Tannehill. Okay. It makes sense why you'd want to run the ball. Robert Sala, he had Zach Wilson. It makes sense why you'd want to run the ball, but now you have Kyler Murray. And unless you're going to be using him in the running game, he's already an injury risk, already an injury risk. I, it just, the hire on a lot of different levels doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. He must have interviewed very well. Um, and, I, and I think, obviously, they offered the, the job to Brian Flores is the report, and he declined. Yeah. Um, so it seems like they l- were looking to go um, defensive all the way. But even if you got the Brian Flores hire, I would have liked that a lot more because Flores mm-hmm. can be seen as a culture guy. Obviously, there was all the reports with how he was with Tua and you know all this stuff. But I think like a guy like that is what Kyler Murray would need. We're seeing Kyler Murray – We you know, was it last off season that we had the study clause in his contract? Then he wasn't happy that it was in his contract. So then it got removed from his contract. And, you know, we're, we're hearing him, you know, he's getting into it on the sidelines with Cliff Kingsbury. It's, it just feels like that would have been a lot better. Higher. Granted, you offered the job to him. He said, no, what can you do? But it feels yeah. like Jonathan, I, I don't know how long Jonathan Gannon's going to last in this job. Yeah. Look to the Arizona Cardinals. I mean, respectfully, what are you guys doing? Yeah. Okay, Brian Flores turned down the job, but what about an Eric B. Enemy? And, and even if you had concerns about, okay, he's probably handled interviews the wrong way, or oh, he's being carried by Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and and you know the, the franchise that is the Kansas City Chiefs. But at least he's an offensive minded guy. At least he's worked with superstars before. At least he has a resume. At, at least he would, you know, cater to what the best player on their team does or at least the position that he plays in, in, in on the side of the ball that he plays in and, and so look with Jonathan Gannon I mean I, it almost feels like they settled you know on a guy that just because his team was in the Super Bowl it's like yo we got to get this car on our team he has to be the head coach but it's like yo what did he do in the Super Bowl his defense gave up 38 points right and all the questions leading up to the Super Bowl at least one of the main questions on Philadelphia side of things was yo is this defense legit how, how is this defense going to not stop? Because you can't stop Patrick Mahomes in that Chiefs offense, but how are they going to contain Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid in that Chiefs offense? Well, they showed they, they showed us 38 points, and that's how that's how he handled you know that situation with, like you said, a talent-rich defense, most of which those guys are free agents. Actually, James Bradbury is a free agent, Fletcher Cox is a free agent, Javon Hargrave is a free agent, Brandon Graham is a free agent, and Dominic Sue is a free agent, Linval Joseph is a free agent, and that's not even including the offensive side of the football. But Jonathan Gannon, what did he do in his one year, you know, as a defensive coordinator for the Eagles? Okay, they, they had 70 sacks and whatnot, but can't we attribute most of that to, to the talent, you know, to the to the players on the team? And given only given the fact that he only has that one year, I, I mean, what does he have resume-wise? Who are some of the other players that he's worked with? You know, because earlier I talked about Shane Steichen 
and some of the things that I liked about him. Well, I liked his history. I liked some of the guys he's worked with. Jonathan Gannon, what, what history is there for him to fall back on? What kind of other players outside of this season, you know, is there for him to fall back on? How did he perform in the game's, you know, biggest stage? And then you have a guy that's – or you have a team that's built around, like you said, a very – a mega talented quarterback in a Kyler Murray. Could it be that nobody wants to coach Kyler Murray? And so Jonathan Gannon was like, yo, I might never get another opportunity to, to be a head coach in the National Football League again. F it. I'm going to take it. I mean, they gave him five years for crying out loud. Five years for doing what? What has he done? Again, I say this respectfully because, like you said, he probably interviewed well. He, he probably, you know, is probably no more uh, inside the league than we probably would know. But, again, I, I think, you know, his resume kind of speaks for itself. And in this scenario, it doesn't do him any favors. I mean, who have you worked with? What have you done? And, and I don't know. I think this is just, like you said, this is going to be a disaster. I don't even know if he's going to be as good as a, John, or as a Brandon Staley. At least Brandon Staley took his team to the playoffs this past season. Uh, the Cardinals, I don't see that happening anytime soon. And they're going to blow it up on offense as well. I don't, I'm not sure if James Conner's coming back. DeAndre Hopkins wants to be traded. Heck, does Kyler Murray want to continue playing football for the next three or four years? How do we know that he's not going to want to pivot towards baseball when things get hard? And Jonathan Gannon does not seem like that guy to me. And I would love nothing more than for him to prove me wrong. Please do so. Prove me wrong. But right now, I'd have to agree with you. I mean, this is the worst head coach and hire by a mile. And if yeah. Eric Bieniemy does damage over there in Washington with one of the worst and most putrid offenses in the last two or three years, then, oh, my gosh, are they going to look stupid. But, yo, I, I hope he doesn't blow this because with all, with all due respect, this is a horrible hire. But, again, I hope he does well. Yeah, I, I think one of the one of the things that the Cardinals kind of the way they've screwed themselves a little bit here. Like, let's say we're going to talk about Eric B in just a little bit, but let's say they, you know, have a, an explosive offense in Washington. Right. I, I think that they, the way they've put themselves in, in the position here, obviously to no real fault of their own with, with Kyler Murray's injury. And he's probably not going to be ready to go until um, midway through the season. And then you kind of have already given Jonathan Gannon like a mulligan, right? Like it, it almost feels like it would be stupid to not give him, two years right like you know like let's say they go let's say they start off whatever one and seven because they don't have a quarterback they have you know kyler murray's injured and then the second half of the season with kyler murray they kind of go like five like that's not you know you can't fire a guy you definitely can and i would if eric Bieniemy was uh, was up for it um yeah. but they've they've put themselves in a tough position where it's like it almost feels like you'd be doing him a a, a major disservice to, to to fire him um after having, you know, no Kyler Murray for probably eight or nine games. Um, yeah, but it's, it's, it's my least favorite hire the entire cycle.